Thanks, Jane. So, uh, as Jane said, I'm going to be speaking about geological time. And uh, if this was, we were told to pitch it sort of like if it was a first year university course. And if it really was, I'd be now getting you to memorise all these names on this geological time scale. Um, but I won't do that. You've got one on your chair so you can memorise them at your own leisure. Um, but so this is the geological time scale. It's hopefully at least vaguely familiar to uh, some, if not most, of you. Um, and, but what I am going to do is try to convey the immensity of geological time. It's huge amounts of time that we're talking about, and it's you know, almost impossible to keep in mind and keep to scale what those amount of times are. So I'm going to try and put that into a little bit of perspective, and then I'll run through a few of the major events that have happened um, through geological time. And because the other two talks you're going to hear about plate tectonics and rock cycle, these are both things that really you need to appreciate the sort of time scales we're talking about to really understand how those things can, can occur. So this is the geological time scale, and it shows it's essentially the history of the Earth, with today at the top, and at the bottom is 4.6 billion years ago. Now, when you say that the Earth's 4.6 billion years old, a common sort of response is, eh, 4.6 billion years. The appropriate response is more like this. And I'm hoping by the end of this talk, you'll feel a little bit more like David there than Kim. <laughs> so first of all, we'll get some perspective. So, if I take this yellow bar here, and at one end we have today, and at the other end we have 20 years ago. 20 years, that's an amount of time we can all appreciate. We've all, um, we all, it's well within a human lifespan. We all have knowledge of what sort of things can happen within 20 years. Um, so we'll start with that. Now, if we multiply 20 years by 10, so now this, time, this bar is 10 times longer, we're talking about 200 years. So what was going on 200 years ago? We've got the olden days. Um, early 1800s, uh, horses and carts and things like that. So already we're talking about quite a long period of time. A lot happens in 200 years. The Earth, uh, so far as humans are concerned, is a very different place uh, for people over those 200 years. But it's still an amount of time we can appreciate. 200 years, that's long. It's longer than a person lives, but you can keep in mind sort of how long that is. So let's multiply it by 10 again. Now we're talking about 2,000 years ago. So now we're really getting into ancient times, literally ancient. We've got ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. So 2,000 years, it's starting to get to, to the sort of amount of time that's a little bit harder to comprehend, but you can still, yeah, 2,000 years, I can keep in mind how long that is. So let's multiply by 10 again, and now we're talking about 20,000 years ago. And so now we're talking about the ice ages, and you've got cavemen, hunters, gatherers, um, living on the Earth. So certainly a very different world, and 20,000 years is a bit harder to be able to appreciate the amount of time that is. And we'll multiply by 10 again, so we're talking about 200,000 years ago. Now 200,000 years ago is where we have the first evidence of Homo sapiens, so that's our species. So anatomically modern Homo sapiens, that's how long we've been on the Earth, physically the same as the way we are now, 200,000 years ago. So we're starting to talk about some huge amounts of time. Before that there were no Homo sapiens on Earth. We evolved. Um, only by then. So let's multiply by 10 one more time. So now we're talking about 2 million years ago. So we started off with that 20 years and we've multiplied by 10 a number of times to get to 2 million years ago, which is when we had multiple different species of hominids on the planet, um, on Earth or in Africa. So there's what we call Australopithecines as well as um, other species of Homo. So there's actually three or four different species at the same time, a bit like how uh, in the great cats you have tigers and lions and different species around at the same time. There were different species of hominids at that time too, so those are related, uh, creatures related to humans. So two million years is what this bar now represents. I'm going to take that two million years and I'm going to squeeze it into that little sliver there. And then I'm moving it up the top here so you can see that up there. And I'm putting this part of the time scale next to it. So now you can see where that 2 million years fits relative to the last 540 million years, which, as a uh, paleontologist, that's the bit of the time scale that's the most interesting, if you ask me. <laughs> uh, and you'll see why I think so uh, shortly. But it's still not the entire time scale. But let's just work through this part for a little bit. So some other events that have happened and where they fit on this part of the time scale. So around 66 million years ago, is where you have the extinction of the dinosaurs. So you can see it was actually it's not that long ago. I mean, it is relative to how long humans have been on the Earth. Remember, we're one-tenth of that little yellow line up there is Homo sapiens. Um, 
But 66 million years ago, uh, at the end of the, the era that we called the Mesozoic, which is what's known as the age of reptiles, when there were lots of dinosaurs on the earth, that's where you've got the dinosaurs going extinct. Now, where the first dinosaurs um, appeared was around 230 million years ago, uh, at the start of the Triassic. So you can see you've got Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous here. Those, that's when you had dinosaurs around during that Mesozoic. So you can see they were actually around for a very long time, longer than the amount of time since they've been extinct. So sometimes people say, you know, what did dinosaurs do wrong to, to go extinct? They died, but you know, they lived on the earth for so long. They're actually very, very successful. Some other events um, during these periods, you have the Carboniferous around 320 million years ago. Uh, you've got lots of uh, really dense forests on the earth and so some of the earliest really um, vibrant forests. And the reason that period's called the Carboniferous is because that was uh, where we have lots of coal of that age that was resulted from where we had these forests. And I think there'll be a 101 talk about resources coming up which might mention that sort of thing and how those form. Around 370 million years ago, we ha have what's called the Age of Fishes, where there was a really high diversity of fish in the oceans. Around 470 million years ago, during the Ordovician, you've got the first land plants. So before that, the land would look very different to how we see it today, because you know, plants dominate the landscape in almost every natural environment. Uh, whereas the very first land plants occurred only 470 million years ago. I say only, you'll see why shortly when I add the rest of the time scale to this. And around 530 million years ago, during the Cambrian, we have something that's known as the Cambrian explosion. And that's where there was a diversification, so lots of different species of creatures living in the oceans. And it was sort of the earliest ecosystems where you've got hunters and predators um, and sort of different animals all interacting with each other and living off each other. And it's where we see a lot of the, the modern body forms of different types of animals. So there's different group big categories of animals that we divide animals into. And you see most of them arise during this period, along with a bunch of other categories that ended up going extinct. So I mentioned that's not the whole time scale. So if we put that to scale over on the right here, this was this part was what we were just looking at. So this is now the rest of the time scale there. So if I take that move that over here. So there's the bits we've already talked about and all those events squeezed in up the top there. Um, a few other things have happened uh, previous to that in the other sort of three billion years or four billion years that we're talking about. Around 580 million years ago during the Ediacaran, we have what's called the Ediacaran fauna. Now these are some very primitive um, type of uh, life that are um, you can see here they're all sort of two-dimensional like I mean they're three-dimensional but they all all, the, all their cells are in contact with the ocean around them um, because they hadn't evolved circulatory systems yet. So in order for their cells to get oxygen and, and um, interact with the environment, um, they needed to, to, to yeah, be, be a lot more simple than those ones during the Cambrian explosion, which is where you got the much more complex life. Uh, this is a big jump now to 2.8 billion years ago. Oh, you'll notice I used that MA notation, so the 580 MA, that means, it actually stands for mega annum, but it means million years ago, but it's mega used in a sense like megabyte. Um, and so for 2.8 billion is GA, which stands for giga annum. So 2.8 billion years ago, uh, we have the gold mineralisation at Kalgoorlie. And again, they'll come along to the resources seminar to hear more about how those sorts of things work. Um, but so you can, that's a lot of Australia's wealth um, over in WA and the, the mining industry over there. You see it's these events so long ago that happened that actually where we get that wealth from. Uh, around 3.2 billion years ago we have some of the earlier banded iron formations and that's uh, an iron ore resource. So again we're a lot of source of a lot of Australia's, um, Australia's wealth. And these are where you have iron in the sediments that were deposited under the ocean. And we think the reason they're there is because there was an increase in oxygen in the atmosphere around that time, and that meant that the iron, that the oxygen increased in the ocean, and then the iron that was in the ocean could combine with that oxygen to form these iron oxides, which were deposited on the ocean floor. You might wonder where that oxygen came from, and it's likely to be from uh, things that we call stromatolites. So these are, well, the rocks are called stromatolites, and they're these fine la finely layered rocks. And they come from cyanobacteria, which is some, that's the earliest evidence of life on Earth at 3.4 billion years ago. Um, they're single-celled creatures that form these mats in layers. 
and they photosynthesize like plants do, so using the energy from the sun to convert that into oxygen. And so they pump the atmosphere full of oxygen and actually change the composition of the atmosphere of the earth. And so this is where you have the single-celled creatures, and then you get this, the simple multi-celled ones up here, and then the more complex ones up here. You can see single-celled, so the norm for life on earth is just single-celled creatures. And even today, the vast majority of life on earth are bacteria. It's the, the, the single-celled creatures, actually. We're very much an abnormality. <laughs> uh, going back to, so the most ancient eon here is the Hadean. Uh, you got four, about 4.4 billion years ago. Uh, is the oldest dated mineral on Earth, and you'll hear a bit more about what a mineral is shortly. But this is a zircon crystal, um, and so it's zircon's very, very hardy and survives through the rock cycle, which you'll hear a bit more about later. Um, and so that was dated on an uh, equipment similar to the one we have here, the shrimp down in our Geochron dating laboratory, um, and that's so the zircon. Like I said they're very hardy and last a long time. So the oldest one that's been dated is actually from the Jack Hills in uh, Western Australia. And that's 4.4 billion years old. And then 4.6 billion years ago is where you have the formation of the Earth. So it's an image demonstrating accretion. So where you've got the solar system uh, with a bunch of debris in the solar system joining up to form the planets. And you might wonder if the oldest dated material is 4.4 billion years ago, the oldest dated mineral on Earth, how do we know the Earth's actually 4.6 billion years? And that's because we've dated meteorites that are a little bit older than anything we've actually found on Earth. So the, and the meteorites will have formed in that same accretion uh, process when the, when the solar system formed. So, and that was 4.6 billion years ago. So that's a very brief tour through geological time. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about geological time, we have a geological time walk at the front There's a, with a bunch of rocks along there as well that, um, at the time periods where they would have formed. Um, and a lot of those are things that I've mentioned in this talk as well. Oh, and there's also a geological time walk app that you can use. And I have a, one of the few remaining flyers which has the little QR code to be able to download that app. So come and scan that on your phone if you want to um, download that. And, so, and there's also a geological time walk book. So the book is an overview of the different geological eras, eras and periods and things that were happening on Earth. The app is specifically about the rocks on the time walk and tells you about each of those. And you're probably familiar, you've seen this out in the foyer, the time scale up there on the wall. So hopefully next time you walk past it you might glance up and uh, just try and appreciate the fact that so this part here is that first 540 million years. So this version of the time scale is not to scale. The other four billion years is squeezed into this bottom part. So next time you're in the foyer standing there looking up, looking up to it, try and imagine it plummeting another eight times longer down into the, into the ground. And hopefully I'll see you standing there with that look on your face. <laughs> so they mentioned there'll be some questions. So I'd like you to take uh, your pieces of paper and hold up between A and B. Which of these is a more realistic image with keeping geological time in mind? <laughs> Seeing a lot of green. A lot of green. We've got a few reds rebelling against the greens. The answer is actually B. It's the red one. <laughs> Because Tyrannosaurus and Stegosaurus have about 90 million years between them. I mentioned how long dinosaurs have been on the Earth. About 90 million years between Tyrannosaurus and Stegosaurus, whereas only 66 between Tyrannosaurus and humans. So B is actually the more realistic image when you take geological time into consideration. So you've seen there's some displays over here. So join us after the other people have given their talks as well. Um, to come and have a look at some of the fossils and uh, rocks on display. And there's also on the board over there, there's a time scale with some events stuck up on the board for you to pin, take a guess at where you think they fall. Most of them I've already mentioned in this talk, not all of them, but so we can see how well you're listening and see where you think they fit on the geological time scale. Thanks very much. <laughs>